Story 1. I recently learned I will be inheriting some properties and a significant amount of money. I told my wife but clarified that this is only between us and she is not to tell anyone, especially her big mouth sister. I don't want anyone to know about the inheritance. I want to invest almost all of the money, hire a property management company, and keep our current lifestyle. Last night at dinner with her parents and siblings, her father congratulated me on my impending windfall, and my brother-in-law pulled me aside to ask about the houses I'd be receiving. He and his wife, my wife's big mouth sister, have been saving for a house, but haven't saved enough yet, and their credit scores are low. I was very angry with my wife all night, but I kept it in check. On the drive home, I yelled at her. I admit it wasn't my finest hour, but she did exactly what I told her not to do. She argued that my secrecy demand was not right, and that she had the right and duty to tell her family about our financial situation, because it was also her financial situation. We argued for hours, so when I finally had enough, I told her that she couldn't be trusted to keep our secrets and that I wasn't telling her anything else about the inheritance from that minute on. I said that in the heat of the moment, but the more I think about it, the more it makes sense. She tells her sister everything, and whatever her sister knows, everyone knows. I don't want the entire city to know what's happening with our bank account. We're due to meet our attorney and later a financial advisor next week, but I think I'll change that appointment to just me. To be clear, she's free to discuss anything with her family. I've only had two topics she's not allowed to discuss, my health and our finances. Not the idiot. Does your wife think she has a duty to inform her family about your inheritance, lottery win, or increase in salary? Does she also think she must share your windfall, especially with her sister and husband, who would like to have one of the houses you inherited? Of course she does. I don't need a crystal ball to see where this is going. This, it sounds like she's already spending the money in her head. If you're in the S, an inheritance kept entirely in your name only is your sole property, not marital assets. You should consult a good attorney, probably a divorce attorney, to determine how best to ensure that these assets remain solely yours. You could then use income from the inheritance assets to improve or benefit your and your wife's lives without allowing her or her family to have any rights to your inheritance. She's going to do it anyway. She'll give ops money to her family one way or another. The dynamics of the family relationship have changed forever. Every holiday they will expect a more expensive gift. You will be expected to pay for group dinners and expected to pay for group events and probably hosts. Also, why can't you take everyone to Jamaica for Christmas? Their kids aren't doing their best in public school, so can't you just help a child go private? Sister-in-law needs an emergency life-saving boob job and tummy tuck. Can you help? And on and on. After all, you can afford it. Not gonna lie, I would probably walk. A sudden windfall changes family and relationship dynamics. People develop unhinged expectations that you must help them out no matter what. You set a clear, reasonable boundary for your family's financial future. Her decision to tell people has potentially put that at risk. At the very least, it will strain your relationship with her family since they're already gearing up to ask for handouts. Your brother-in-law proved why you should never talk about money outside your immediate household. Never. I would have this money in a separate account because your wife and her family sound messy and entitled. Story 2. I, a 42 female, have a son called Adrian Teen. Adrian is bi and has been out for two years. He has a twin sister, Anna. If I were to impose twin stereotypes on them, Adrian is the quiet one and Anna is the one you should be afraid of. Adrian has an ex-best friend named Mike. They were friends when Adrian was four years old and our families are quite close. Adrian told me that they fell out, but when Adrian first came out, Mike was his biggest supporter and they only fell out a few months ago. Hannah tells me there's more to the story, but I won't pry. Since they stopped being friends, Mike tries very hard to engage in locker room, playground bullying against Adrian, but no one participates because Adrian is likable and chill. He's also nearly the same height as his father, six foot two and quite big, so he's definitely not the type to get bullied, and he just doesn't care. He mostly ignores him, 
and he finds it quite funny. He is just very quiet and has been his whole life. Last week after gym class, my son realized that he'd forgotten his shower gel at home and asked Anna for hers. She dropped it off and went back to her class. Her shower gel is bright pink and my son has no issue with using it. Mike, however, saw my son with this pink bottle and started on his usual. Oh, look at how gay Adrian is, nonsense. Apparently Mike was standing near Adrian's stuff, and my son responded with, Your mom's gay, now get away from my stuff. A few people laughed, and Mike then said, Is the gel yours, or did you borrow it from your nasty sister? Witnesses confirm all of this. He's been trying to get into a fight with my son for weeks, now and my son laughs at every attempt, but insulting Anna is one thing he won't tolerate. My son called Mike a slur, grabbed his things, and got into the shower. His exact words were, Stop talking about my sister when I'll find your butt on Grinder." I was pretty shocked to hear this because this is entirely out of character for Adrian. But even the most likable people have their limits. Mike is also straight. The situation escalated and was brought to the attention of the school, which demanded that Adrian apologize for being phobic. During the meeting, I told them that the school is well aware that my son is a bi and therefore can't be phobic, especially to someone straight. I said I'd have him apologize for insulting Mike if Mike apologized for his behavior for the past few months, but they aren't budging. They're saying that my son's use of a slur was unacceptable and that he needs to apologize but I don't think that it's a big deal considering the context. Mike's parents are also insisting that my son apologizes. Am I the idiot? Has Mike been told to apologize to Anna for calling her names and saying derogatory things behind her back in a public setting? Has he been ordered to apologize for the constant harassment and the phobic comments to Adrian? How was your son for months, if anything? I'd be threatening the school with legal action for their neglect of this entire situation, not the idiot in the slightest. Adrian can apologize if, and only if, Mike is made to apologize and atone for his behavior first. End of discussion, not up for debate. The school seems to be run by a path of least resistance type people. They'd rather punish the victims who defended themselves than deal with the hassle of correcting a bully since bullies, and their parents are almost always raging idiots who make their issues and insecurities everyone else's problem. The answer to that conundrum is simple. Make yourself the bigger problem so they'll switch targets. You are the idiot. What is this bull that just because you are bi, or because your target is straight you can't be phobic? That's utterly ridiculous. Your son, according to your detailed description, was being extremely phobic. You excuse his behavior and pretend that he automatically gets a pass on bigotry is extremely bad parenting. Mike's bad behavior doesn't magically excuse your sons and is hypocritical for you to clutch pearls over Mike's behavior while cheering on your sons. Your sons. Opai, oh, based on the information we have, I feel there is a lot more to this story and you have no idea what's happening. I'm guessing the more to the story is Mike also questioning his orientation. A good chance he came on to Adrian, but Adrian turned him down because he was his best friend and didn't see him that way. Now Mike is hurt and embarrassed and expresses this by being a bully to Adrian. My 39 male sister-in-law 31 had a bachelorette party on Saturday. I volunteered to babysit her daughter Tammy, fake name tween, and my wife's cousin's kids, male tween and female pre-tween at my place while my wife, 37, her sister, and their cousin went to the party. Also present were my kids, male tween, female pre-tween, and female toddler. For dinner, we decided to have pizza. I made the order through an app. Now I still need to figure out what happened, but the order was taking forever, and I was unable to contact the delivery guy. The pizza place wasn't helping either. After waiting for 90 minutes, I decided to cancel the order and pick a different restaurant. I'd waited so long to cancel because this was my daughter's and Tammy's favorite pizza place. I got my daughter to support the new restaurant by telling her they put ketchup on the pizza, don't kill me. But Tammy was insistent on the first one. She had a crying fit while we were placing the new order. Even after she calmed down, she was still grumpy and short with the rest of us. At first the kids and I tried to cheer her up, 
but then she told us to shut up or leave her alone whenever we tried. Throughout the wait I reminded Tammy and the other kids that they wouldn't eat the pizza if they didn't behave. She still complained about the new restaurant multiple times. When the pizza finally arrived, Tammy opened the box and said, I'm not eating that crap. She said that in front of the younger three. After that, I put leftover chicken pasta in the microwave and told her that was her dinner. She started crying, saying she wanted the pizza and would behave herself, but I held my ground. Tammy didn't eat any of the pizza, but all the others did. My sister-in-law is calling me unfair and cruel for forcing Tammy to have leftovers while the other kids ate pizza. She's also accusing me of favoring my wife's cousin's kids and my own and insisting that there were better punishments that didn't involve excluding Tammy. My wife's completely on my side. Her cousin is on the fence. Am I the idiot? Tammy opened the box and said, I'm not eating that crap. Oh boy, she's a tween. That's too young to speak this way, and she's simultaneously too old to behave this way. You are not the idiot, holy moly, right? The girl is throwing tantrums like a toddler. Over pizza? Yikes. If I'd behaved that way anywhere there would have been serious repercussions, starting with a mouth of soap for dinner. She's probably probably never faced a consequence before. Yep, and she had a crying fit over pizza. Tammy is way too old to be acting that way. I guess she's been severely spoiled to think this behavior is okay. You still fed her, so it's not like it was a really unreasonable punishment. Tammy messed around and found out. Welcome to real life, kiddo. She's obviously not used to people following through on their threats of punishment. Sounds like sister-in-law can find another sitter in the future for her special little princess. She created that monster, she can suffer the consequences. I'm three months postpartum, but for the most part it doesn't really affect me. Our daughter is an easy-going baby so my healing process was smooth sailing. I've been up and doing my pre-baby routine since maybe a month after I gave birth. With that said, I still get super tired and I still have PP anger that randomly spikes whenever my breast milk drops, so maybe I'm being too harsh here. Two days ago, I made a huge corn chowder. It took me at least four hours between prep and cook. I've been craving this since maybe two weeks after I gave birth, and though my husband said he would make it for me, I always declined the offer. I wanted to do it myself because, to be blunt, his cooking isn't great. Edible but not great. So I wanted to make it, and I made it two days ago. I made so much. The mid-sized stockpot was up to the top. I've been eating it since I made it for almost every meal, and I wasn't even remotely sick of it. Not that it matters. But anyway, I had more of it last night, and I transferred what was left into a small Tupperware container. I had between 15 to 20 cups left, the Tupperware has measurements on the side, enough for about 10 bowls anyway. My husband made plans with his parents a few days ago to come over for dinner tonight, and he asked me to make a ham dinner. I don't eat ham, but I had no problem with this because I had corn chowder left. Mother-in-law and father-in-law showed up around 11 a.m. this morning to hang out for the day. I run to the store to get other stuff I need to make for dinner. When I got home my mother-in-law said that corn chowder was delicious, you'll have to give me the recipe. I said, oh thank you whatever. I figured she ate one bowl, but I go to the kitchen to drop off the groceries, and the Tupperware holding the corn chowder is in the sink. I check the fridge to see if it had been moved to a smaller container. It's gone, they ate all of it. I called my husband into the room and asked him where all my chowder was, and he said sorry, I offered mom and dad a bowl of it, and my mom polished off the entire thing. So I go, there was easily enough for ten bowls in there. There's no damn way she just ate all of it. And he just shrugged and said, no she really did, dad only had one bowl. So I asked why he didn't stop her, and he said he felt bad because she enjoyed it so much and acted like she was starving. I told him I wasn't making dinner tonight, he can. I told him it was messed up that he would give away that much food, knowing I cooked it specifically because I wanted it and saw me plugging away at it for two days. Besides that, there's no way that woman is still hungry after that. He says that he can't make the ham dinner because it will come out like crap. True, but I told him that's not my problem.
and to say to his parents that I'm not feeling well, and I'm going to go hang out in the baby's nursery because of how upset I am. He says I'm overreacting. Not the idiot. His family already ate lunch at your house and devoured ten servings of soup. What the heck? Aren't they offering to bring dinner to you? You're the one who just had a baby. And it's ham for dinner. You just warm it up. It's not an elaborate gourmet meal. I'm sure he can handle it. I don't see how she could possibly be hungry after eating nine bowls of corn chowder. I love corn chowder, but nine bowls. Not in one sitting could I do that. My stomach hurts thinking about it. I don't blame you after you worked on that dish for two days. That's a crap ton of soup. It was really greedy on their end as well, so don't feel bad for any discomfort you may cause them. They should feel bad. They wanted ham, so they sent you out to get it and cook it even though they know you don't eat it. Idiots. Absolutely. Tell them all that they've already eaten dinner, and they're welcome to feed you since there is now nothing for you to eat. Don't hide and say you're not feeling well. Confront these entitled idiots and set a boundary about what happens with your food in your house. Lordy. Mother-in-law is going to face some rough karma on this one. I'm 30 female close to my sister 32, and I've hated how bad her marriage has become. My sister got married four years ago. Her husband was a widower with three young children, pre-tween, young tween, and older tween when they got married. At first, I really liked my sister's husband, and they made a very good couple. She confided in me, a couple of years ago, that things weren't as great as they appeared to be on the outside. The kids would say awful things to her, and her husband's family, and his late wife's family would make her feel like the mistress instead of his wife. We discussed this a lot, and I encouraged her to speak to her husband, and the therapist, and look for help. She brushed off the suggestions and stated she didn't want to rock the boat too much. We started hanging out a lot more, and I did my best to observe everything happening. Over time, it became super clear that the issues ran deeper than she had even realized. Yes, the kids would say awful things to her about not being good enough, make fun of how she talks, she has a stutter, and compare her to their mom in a negative light. Yes, her husband's family treated her like she was his mistress and they had no respect or care for her at all. Her husband's in-laws were very clearly bitter. She was in their grandkids' lives instead of their daughter, and they acted like it was her fault their daughter was gone. But her husband was always in hearing distance and would laugh. He would make his comments about how annoying she could be. He didn't compare her to his late wife or bring up his late wife when he was speaking badly about my sister, but he was doing his own crap. In April of last year, my sister finally started seeing a therapist. She's now almost at the stage where she thinks she will leave soon. She still freezes when she thinks about it, but even her therapist thinks she's coming along amazingly. She has her exit plan and money ready to help her when she's out. My sister told me I no longer have to hold back if her husband annoys me. Saturday, my sister's husband showed up. I was having a small family dinner, and he showed up a few hours after my sister got there and tried to get himself into my house. I refused to let him in, and he told me if it was a family dinner he and the kids should be there. But since they were with their aunt that day he was there. I told him he wasn't welcome. I informed him I would not allow someone into my home who treats my sister so disrespectfully and who allows his family, including his children, to be so cruel to my sister. He tried to make a fuss and complain that I brought up his kids. I told him I put the kids' attitude on him 100% because they'd been made to feel it's okay by him never correcting them. He tried to yell his way in, but I stood firm. Afterward, my mom said I should never have interfered, and it's not our place to deny him entry when they are still technically together. Am I the idiot? Edit, sister already gave me the go-ahead and had no issues with what I did but our mom did. Even though my sister was okay with it, I could see where my mom was coming from, and it's what made me ask. Not the idiot. Your mom is wrong saying it's not your place to deny him entry. Um, it's your house, and he showed up uninvited. El Mal, it's entirely your place to decide who comes into your home. Good for you for helping your sis grow her shiny spine. I hope she ruins him in the divorce. So your sister is saying don't let him in and your mother is defending him 
and saying you should ignore your sister and let him in. What the heck is wrong with your mother? Oh, I think we all know that. She believes you never ever get divorced because you made the till death us do part vows. Clearly, you're an amazing sister. Your home, your rules. Thanks for listening.